So before I get into the follow-up video on the Golf 1500 single generator, I just want to make mention that back up in March, I think it was March the 12th, I've done a video on the 650 plus subscribers. And someone told me I was a little premature at that. Well, I have to say they're absolutely correct because uh, as of this morning, 1,039 subscribers. Wow, can't believe it. Can't believe that that many people was following, listening to me uh, talk about uh, electronic stuff. It's really uh, amazing. Anyway, I want to thank everyone that's uh, following me and uh, watching the videos. Much appreciated. And it was very, very pleasing this morning to get up and watch this oscilloscope restoration from uh, Paul Webb at Mr. Carson's lab. Very enjoyable. Great work, Paul. I really enjoyed that video. And then before I could even get started on uh, the follow-up video, Peter over at TRX Bench throwed this video up. And uh, it's talking about electrolytic capacitors and leakage. Very educational video. Well done on that, Peter. Another one uh, up and growing YouTuber I've been following is Mike over at Mike's Radio Repair. He's doing some very nice stuff with some uh, older vintage uh, CB radios. If you haven't watched his channel, please do. He does some real good work and he's a good straight up stand up type of guy. If you guys like woodworking, I've been watching uh, this young lady, April Wilkerson, and she does uh, woodworking. I think her story is that. She was out looking at how, some how-to videos and couldn't find what she wanted, so she started uh, doing her own YouTube videos. Very nice uh, work that she does. I know uh, it's not nothing to do with electronics, but to me, she is your Peter and Paul of, you know, of the uh, woodworking field. Very nice um, work that she does. Good growing channel also. I enjoy watching her uh, make these little uh, whatnots and remodeling stuff. Very fun to watch. Anyway, I just wanted to, to mention those, and uh, you know, if you haven't been following any of them, uh, please do. I'll leave links down below so uh, you can get on and watch them. I think most of my subscribers already know Peter and Paul, and uh, already know the quality work that they perform. Anyway, we'll uh, get right on into uh, looking at this Golf um, 1500 single generator follow-up. After uploading the vi video yesterday on this Golf 1500 single generator, I suppose I've got somewhere around 15 um, emails and private messages. Want to know a little bit more about it, so uh, maybe we can help you know figure it down and locate the problem so uh, I went ahead and did a little more uh, digging into this thing and tore apart a few more um, little bits on it and uh, just wanted to uh, validate a few things so others can see and see more about more of the construction of how this thing is built it's really amazing how they pack so much stuff in this tiny little unit and uh, you know first of all we're thinking the quality wouldn't be that great on this but it's really uh, kind of a work of art on how they put this thing together so uh, we'll get in and take a little you know more in-depth look at it and see what all was in this little unit I removed the thumb wheel and set it aside just where I could pull the, uh, the front panel loose and drop it forth and have a shield here it sits right over top of this and quite a bit of little screws in it they got this compartment very RF tight and as you can see the wires come off the uh, binary switches and go through these little feed through caps and there's 17 of them here there's, the third one from the end is not used it's just completely running through it's nothing connected to it as you can see, it's two layers inside that are completely shielded from each other. And they use a feed-through cap going through. And uh, as you can see, there's these little uh, chokes inside. And it's connected to the top feed-through cap. 
and it comes through and connects to a second feed through tap then there's another choke and then another feed through cap that's going out horizontally into the uh, board behind it and when I tested these um, chokes they test at about 2.6 ohms at 0 0.04 microhenries and uh, we look over here to this side we can see this red and purple wire coming in so we got 12 volts coming in through here through this cap and then the purple wire is connected to this second one back here behind it and it goes down and into the board so these looks like the two voltage wires that feeds power into the uh, main uh, PLL board over on the other side is a there's three wires here that are going down I haven't traced out what they're going to but they're going down to that bottom board I'm pretty sure it's some type of power supply oh. now on the other side we have this uh, binary counter board and we have five ICs across the top and these are MC14522 and they are binary dividers and uh, if you look down here at the bottom of the board you can see where these feed through caps from the board in the front come through and they're connected and they run up with traces behind this board and what this acts like is like a channel selector in a CB radio just does all the binary function like a channel selector would do and at first glance when I was looking at all these ICs on here I was thinking that maybe one of them was part of the modulation circuit um, remember on the front this thing can inject modulation into it but when I went and checked this out we can see our modulation control let me zoom in on that just a little bit it's right here and there's a uh, shielded cable coming off of it and it runs right down underneath of this board here so I think this board here is is where the modulation is developed at let me see if I can uh, get a better view of those uh, two IC chips there I haven't even looked these two up yet but as you can see they're MC 1741 CPs So both of them are the same chips. And there's various uh, level controls on this board. And you know when I first took it apart I thought maybe this was part of the power supply board. But uh, actually it's not all your power supply is done over here on this little terminal strips. And these uh, regulators that we looked at yesterday on it so like yesterday you know we was talking about the 5 megahertz crystal and a trimmer capacitor for it and we got three ICs here and these are MC14518 CP and what these are are dual up counters or dual BCD counters here we have a 74 196 PC and from what I can find out this is it's also a counter chip over here on this chip is our phase detector which is the MC4 uh, MC4044 P and then this little chip over here on the side is a MC1741 CP which shows as an op amp So looking over this thing, you know, there's only really two custom parts in it. Um, everything else is basically, you know, what I would call off-the-shelf parts. Uh, one of them being this core right here. Look like it's probably a, uh, a custom-made core. And um, they have another core just wrapped around this. Over here on this side is another looks like a custom made core it almost looks identical to this one but it's a little bit smaller in diameter and it is sitting right on a uh, little small circuit board 
So I was thought maybe that these two wires that was going in here was what was feeding this, but it actually is not. There's a white coax cable here that goes into this little board. And what this does, this comes over here underneath in the center, and it's actually the output of this board feeds into this circuit. And this whole uh, circuit is in, encased in this little aluminum can. Now if you notice there's two uh, cutouts and what they were for was to uh, give room for these wires to come in and out of. So as I was looking I noticed a little small cut right here in this purple wire which is a 5 volt line but unfortunately that doesn't seem to be the problem. Um, I thought maybe that this was cut or pierced the ground that may have been causing the unit to uh, not work but after taking it off I could not find that that made any difference at all and we are, do have continuity on both ends of this wire so I lifted the main uh, what I'm going to call the PLL board and here is that white coax I was telling you about and it's connected right here in the center. Now yeah, um, this morning when I pulled this off, this whole board was very, very heavily covered in flux. So I took some uh, acetone and some isoprop and cleaned all this flux off. I mean, it was really, really thick to the point where um, you couldn't even see some of the pins on these ICs. So it was very heavily covered in uh, solder flux but uh, you know looking at it I don't see any problem with any solder joints everything looks good it's not some of the best solder joints I ever seen but again I don't see any problems and you can tell all this has been hand soldered no um, none of this wave sorting or uh, anything that you would see in modern day stuff so what we're looking at here is the back side of the divider board um, I could not open it up very far because of all the connections at the bottom but I wanted to do was get in here and look behind it and see how bad the flux was on it and looking at this I do notice that some of the pins I'm sorry that you can't get a good close up but it's hard to get the camera down at the bottom with the way this board is angled but uh, some of these solder connections are questionable. I am seeing some cracks around them. Now someone, in fact, two people has mentioned that they think it's a uh, missing a 5 volt issue. And uh, I will probably agree with them. The output frequency is so stable and is locked on that one frequency at 27.7 megahertz. So that would make sense if... Uh, for some reason that the encoder is not uh, doing the its you know job correctly that it's got the uh, the scheme of the whole PLL out of phase so I could see where that would be a problem but yeah very little sort of flux on this board so whoever sorted this board did a pretty good job and another thing I see each board is labeled um, over here it says gall it says foil and then there's B dash Looks like 1531 here. So they have all the boards labeled underneath that's in this piece of equipment. There's one wire right here that looks kind of, uh, I don't know, the insulation is peeling back off of it. So I might need to inspect this and clip this off and resold it. But other than that, it's not looking too bad. So here what we're looking at is the bottom of that large tuning can. This is the other end of the coax going and in feeding into it. We have this brown wire coming off here that's going to a RCA jack that goes out the bottom. From there it goes into the uh, attenuator and then out the front panel. Um, again, this gall is written right on the uh, bottom of this board. Um, there is quite a bit of flux on here as you can see 
and we'll have to go in and clean all of this and remove that and get the board good and clean. So on the top side of this board we have a couple of uh, switching transistors. So there's one more transistor here, 2N5223. Um, we have a variable capacitor here at the bottom. Um, variable resistor over here at the side. And then the uh, coil runs through to each side and then there's a center tap here. Uh, no diodes on the board, just capacitors, transistors, and resistors, and the core and the other two available components. So there we have it. That's another look at the Gall 1500 uh, single generator. Um, I guess my next step is I'm going to go in and try to clean up some of these solder joints, remove the flux off the back of this little um, coil over here get that board good and clean then I'm gonna go in and start um, checking power supply voltages again and uh, try to track them out and got plenty of paper I'm gonna start writing down trying to draw out some of this schematic and maybe we can get down and find out just what's going on um, I don't think it'll be too hard uh, like I say um, and like the other ones that said it's probably just missing a 5 volts or something to the uh, rotary switches. So uh, I hope that helps those that have asked. And it gives us a little more uh, information to look for. But it would be nice to see this whole thing going. And uh, see just exactly what it will do. And uh, another video already in process that I've already done. Is tearing down this big US, uh, UPS power supply. I got an idea for that cabinet so uh, yeah that'll probably be coming up shortly after this video the video has already been done I've got to be done as edited and uploaded but I just wanted to go ahead and get back on this and uh, get a little more information out anyway uh, we're going to end this video here and uh, we'll catch you next time